joined by Eustace Kunantz and we're going to be covering the uh, CX4000 in a bit more detail. So, Eustace, tell us about sort of the, it's a conventional UHD camera for, for news gathering. What sort of new features does it, does it bring? Yeah, so um, right now we are looking at sort of almost identical cameras really, uh, the PX5100 and the CX4000. Um, in terms of features, well, it is obviously uh, the new 4K sensor, which is a large frame sensor. So we're working with an expansion lens behind uh, the um, bayonet of the optics, sort of to keep the image circle down to before. Okay. And um, well, yeah, it's a single sensor camera, and uh, we've got a nicely readable OLED display for all your audio metering, time codes, and user bits and status information. Um, in terms of well. It hasn't really changed its ergonomics because okay. we wanted it to be familiar to those who use ENG cameras. Yeah. And, uh, so the, so the, the, the location of everything is where you'd expect it yeah, to be exactly. in terms of its form factor and everything, okay. Yeah, so we've got uh, all our controls, our camera controls, we've got all our uh, transport controls right here, we've got uh, audio metering section and audio leveling section right here. And on the back, we have got all the other connectivities, such as 12G NDI and uh, 4K 60P uh, HDMI con um, output. And um, well, all the two outputs are featuring full 4 to 2 10-bit color sampling. So we have a high, very high resolution at the SDI or HDMI output, which is very important. Okay. And what about recording then? So what are you what are you recording onto with with, with this? Well, recording-wise, we've changed a bit from the uh, existing camera lineup. So right now, we are featuring an Express P2 card slot and two SD card slot right here, which are taking uh, the Micro P2 form factor cards. So um, the larger the Express P2 card gives us better speed, so much faster download of all the data that has been gathered on it. And uh, it is obviously much larger, so that means um, we could pack loads of more footage onto a single car than we did with previous or legacy P2 cars as well. So is, uh, has Panasonic developed any new codecs to support UHD capture? Yes, obviously. Um, I mean, we had, to, we had to migrate to a new codec because essentially we're covering four times the amount of pixels. So if we have stuck with the traditional ABC Intra codec, uh, we would end up with much too high data rates. So uh, we adapted the new HEVC codec for uh, UHD capturing, really. And do you see a, an increase in the demand for UHD capture for, for news gathering? It is going to be adapted yeah. sometimes in the future. But since we have to fit the camera into a much larger workflow, yeah. um, we expect uh, adaption rate, to be gradually, okay. yeah, but it will come one day. Okay, and then in terms of streaming, streaming. So with this with this camera, you've got an X265 codec that yeah. can be used particularly for, for live streaming. How's yeah. how's that gonna? We've seen live streaming increase sort of by up to three times thanks to Facebook Live, yeah. YouTube Live, yeah. etc. Yeah. Do you think the the introduction of this X265 codec is going to help improve that more? Yeah. This camera features all the available or the known streaming options that CX350 offers and ports it now to a, a larger a CX4000 shoulder style camera. Um, so we've got at the back we've got an uh, RJ45 plug where we can uh, plug an XLR style um, LAN cable into the camera which gave, gives us great robustness. Yeah, okay. And uh, well yeah with all these streaming features we hope uh, that the uh, streaming option will be widely adopted and sort of used in the uh, traditional ENG market as well. Great. Uh, thanks for your time, Eustace. Yep. And if you've got any questions, please be sure to comment on the video. So thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.